Welcome to a new episode from Ampro Engineering, and this time I'm going to show you what, to me, is the greatest thing I have ever designed. What we're looking at here is an ORV. In, in fact, if you're familiar with the ORV cars, we're looking at many of them, but that's besides the point. Look past the body, look past the, the these, whatever. What the hell are these? Dynamite. Interesting. Anyway, ignore all that. This is no longer an ORV as you know it. Here's a close-up of a pretty familiar part of the Tamiya off-road vehicle chassis. What we have here is a uh, this is a constant velocity axle that is out of the uh, the uh, the new Monster Beetle, the re-release, and the re-release Blackfoot. These pieces here are what came with the uh, re-release of the Frog and the re-release of the Subaru Brat. So this is a standard dog bone setup. And those of you familiar with the original version of this car will very much recognize the hex drive variant. Now, unlike most of you out there, I have never had a hex drive fail. I think they're, they're perfect. The differential is a different story, but we're not gonna talk about that here. So nevertheless, we have three variations of axles for the ORV cars to date. What I have been reading is that oftentimes these axles will pop out. It's less prevalent with the dog bone style, and we'll see that in a minute, but on the CVA style, it will pop out. Now the reason for this, if I actually put the axle in a horizontal, see, so the kind of the pins directly pointing at you here. All right, you can see what we've got there is center of the, uh, the, the roll pin to the outside, to the outside of the, drive cup, you're looking at about three and a half millimeters. And that's that's pretty adequate. It seems to be in there quite nicely, but things change when you rotate. And I'm gonna try and rotate the car as well. All right. So the reason this happens here is because as you rotate the axle, the uh, due to the, the angle of the CVA, the roll pin angle changes, and that's, that's how cars work. If you're familiar with kind of uh, full-size cars, this is what every single front drive car has. Not necessarily a, a dog bone like this, you're going to have something a lot more complicated than that, but this is the, the same basic principle. Now, I guess driving around, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really seem like it's going to fall out, but when I was initially testing this here, um, I was like, okay, well, this, this doesn't seem too bad, and then I kind of started to do this. Just push on this a little bit, I'm like, oh, wow. There's a, really, I'm not putting much force on the, on the trailing arm, and it's really coming out far. And with a little extra force, the dog bone just, there it is. Okay. For me, this is unacceptable. I, I don't know what Tamiya was thinking here, but I understand that they felt the hex head axles were not good, therefore they were updated with the dog bones, but then they updated them with the CVA, which on paper sounds brilliant, but the number one issue with these trailing arms is, let's look again at the center of the roll pin, as I compress the suspension, watch it, watch it move. I mean, this is massive translation. The reason for that is because this axle, the center of this axle does not move like it normally would on the front suspension. So the front suspension is a double wishbone style and the tire on this car, it's really hard to tell, but if you actually, if you measured its relaxed position versus its fully compressed position, it would actually be sticking out further because uh, as these, these upper and lower links become horizontal, thanks to trigonometry, they also get longer with respect to the, uh, the, uh, the center of the, the chassis. In this case here, that doesn't happen. These are fixed at this pivot up here, and it goes up and down and nothing really, there's no, no camber gain, it just stays constant. Good theory, you know, it works nicely for, you know, a 1980s machine. However, today we're using more powerful motors. We're seemingly, uh, you know, abusing these cars a little more than we used to. And the fact of the matter is, the axles of these cars were always a troublesome point, as was the differential. So I've been 
annoyed at this whole scenario for, for years. I actually used to race my monster beetle back when there was a racing class. They used to call them a heavy metal, <laughs> the heavy metal class. This is before the RC-10Ts and the, Lo and the Lozy trucks started to really become popular. My problem with the suspension was always just the, the way it acted in a turn. It seemed that anytime you would uh, hit a turn with some speed, you would press the uh, the inside suspension would compress and the outside tire would lift up and you know it made for you know some dramatic turning but you also the tires in the air now see how it's doing this it's doing whatever it wants it's not helping this tire is the only tire that's helping you turn so i got kind of tired of that and most importantly i got tired of the car flipping over okay not cool anymore i decided i'm done with these quick patches i'm fixing the rear suspension. And I did. Please welcome a double wishbone rear suspension for all ORV cars. This will fit every single ORV car with this transmission. I know someone's gonna go, oh, it doesn't fit a King Blackfoot. No, you're absolutely right. It'll fit every single ORV car with this trans. Let's take a closer look. I had to do something a little bit unique here. I had to make this entire suspension setup work with the CVD axle, the dog bone axle, and the hex drive axle. But I think it's gonna be the most prevalent on this axle here. Okay, notice where the center point of the roll pin is. It's considerably further back than the other side of the car. Now, because of how the geometry of the suspension works, you're going to see very little translation of this axle pin. Watch this. Okay. It may look like there's none. There actually is. It's moving about a millimeter. I could have made it so that it didn't move at all. And to do that, I would have had to have the center of the roll pin, the center of the lower pivot and the upper pivot to be completely in line. That was the original goal. But the problem with that is the geometry for the CVDA, the dog bone and the hex drive are all different. I'm not going to make three different versions because they're all so subtly different that one version should be able to accommodate them all without any issues. And that's what we've got here. So let's rotate the arm up or the axle up and take a look at what we have here. So notice how much further in the roll pin is in the drive cup. Again, let's compress the suspension. Okay, you are seeing the roll pin, uh, the angle change as we fully compress the suspension. Okay, now with the suspension fully, uh, fully extended, there's not a chance that this will ever come out. In fact, like this side over here, where we can very easily just yank this sucker straight out. The only way you're gonna do that on this side is if you rip off the upper control arm. In this case here, I am using a tie rod. I feel like the production version should be a rigid upper link because this is, again, this is not really a race car. This is a Blackfoot, it's an ORV. And like the Super Blackfoot and the King Blackfoot, those didn't have upper, uh, adjustable upper links. The thing is, that'll also increase the price because now we have a uh, higher priced um, to 3D print it. So maybe you guys can give me some feedback. I, I don't know. I'm thinking right now that I might just stick with the turnbuckle because it's going to be cheaper. So as we can see, oh, sorry, this guy's still dangling about. God, that goes in easy. In terms of suspend, susp oh, by the way, I basically, I just chopped off the um, the print directly in half because this is way not in half it's a little bit less than half uh, it's way cheaper uh, to just print out this section here due to the height and you can see that there is an integrated uh, rear shock tower that sits well below the top of the transmission case which means that on a Subaru Brat this suspension setup will fit perfectly in fact there's a little if I can see, there's a little diagonal brace here as well. Things you can do with 3D printing. That's just magnificent. All right, so let's go ahead and compress the rear suspension. So I'm going to grab it by the center here. And there you go. Sorry, I do have two different shocks on here, so they're going to behave a little bit differently. Okay, suspension travel is nearly identical. The 
length of the shock is 80 millimeters. And when I say 80 millimeters, I mean 80 millimeters. You put in a 90, you put in an 85, you're going to screw this up. This is designed specifically to work with an 80 millimeter shock absorber because if this thing extends any further downward, the axle shaft will come into contact with the drive cup on the CVDA style axles. It is very important that you put in an 80 millimeter. Not necessarily this Tamiya one, just an 80 millimeter. You can also make an 80 millimeter of an 85 by adding some internal spacers, but I want to be very, very clear about that. Okay, so one more thing. The transmission is not designed to have all the load distributed through these two points because on the original version, all the load goes through the arm over here. So what I have done, and I apologize because I know it doesn't quite look right, is I've made a brace. What we're looking at here is a replacement to the door. Now, I know it's got a giant hole here. Again, it's because I 3D printed it just to prototype this. So normally this would be solid. It rigidly bolts to the lower part of the transmission right here. These are two M3 bolts. And uh, what's interesting about this is that you don't just put the hole, uh, the screw through the hole. There are bosses on this lower piece here that allow it to center in the holes on the aluminum plate. This becomes a structural member and redistributes the load to the chassis instead of forcing all the, all the impact to go through these points over here. And this, even though it's got no structure, I mean, this thing is such a, you know, these are really tiny walls. Even though this thing is very, very weak at the moment, uh, the, the rigidity of the chassis has increased dramatically. And you'll see this as this is being assembled. Now, that means the battery doesn't come out. Come on, would I do that to you? We're going to make a replacement door here that'll probably come off with some uh, body pins. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So that is the uh, the next prototype, that or at least the next thing that we're going to prototype. So for the time being, this is this is where we're at right now. We've got this. Now I am going to make this vehicle operational soon, but there's a couple little tweaks I want to do to this. Um, if if I was hack, I would say it's good enough. But there's a couple of things I don't really think are perfect. There's just uh, some geometry in this hub that isn't uh, quite right to me. And I think I'm going to make the lower arm one millimeter longer simply because I have the ability to. Now, before I let you go, let's go ahead and try out the dog bones. I wanted to show a brief size comparison of the outdrives. In this case here, we have the original hex and in from the side, we can see how much taller the dog bone version of it is. Okay. We're looking at three millimeters in height difference. Let's compare that to the CVDA. You'd think these are the same, but they're not. This uh, CVDA version is nearly two millimeters taller. And I see why Tamiya did this. They did this to prevent it from flying out. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, did they fix it? No, they didn't. They, you know what should you know what they should have done was done telescoping drive axle, uh, axles, like Thorpe did and a ton of other companies did. Those the telescoping ones are the are the fix. These these are patches. So here we have it with the dog bone, and as we can see once again, you know it, it's completely free and clear. I'm going to rotate the axle 90 degrees. You probably can't see anything. And I, I know I don't have this piece here. It's actually kind of, the axle's slightly oversized, so this it's just a pain in the butt to get that in there. So I get it from the top, and there you have it. Nice and far away from the end of the drive cup. Let's get it again here. There we go. Now, with these, do make sure that you have the O-rings in here. Otherwise, they'll slide back and forth uh, when you're driving the truck around, and you will uh, prematurely wear out the... Uh, the roll pins. So you definitely want to definitely want to do that. All right. And just for the sake of making sure they fit everywhere, let's bust out the hex drives. All right. Lastly is the, the original hex drive. And as we can see, much like before, the hex drive fits. I'm not in love with this. Um, to me, well, first off, I think this is supposed to sit back. Oh, you know why? No, that's not why. I'm convinced this is supposed to be sitting back more. I got to investigate this in the transmission. It works perfectly. There's nothing rubbing, but man, is it close. So my, my, my plan is to increase the length of the arm by one millimeter and thusly uh, alleviating any potential issue here. So again, I think this isn't sitting properly. We're going to investigate that. Who knows what's in this transmission? Plus I do have the, um, 
<laughs> the CVD axle version on the other side. I think I solved the problem of why this wasn't fitting. What the hell is this? It's, it's plastic. This is the right one, right? This is a metal one. I just noticed that all my other cars have this, but where did this come from? Is that a striker? I have never seen this before. Any help is greatly appreciated. I hope you all enjoyed watching this. I'm pretty excited about this upgrade here and I'm really bummed out that the truck doesn't run. I guess that's what I'm doing tomorrow night. I've got a couple other projects coming in ahead of the prototype of this one here. As you can tell, it's not quite ready to send off for my nylon versions, but I figure maybe two, three more days and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and order the, uh, the release bits. So there's a number of additional upgrades for the Blackfoot coming out as well, like the nylon upper and lower control arms for the Blackfoot uh, or the ORV. You've got mud blaster front and rear body mounts, and there's a number of additional braces that I've got in development as well. So a lot of, lot of love to the ORV cars. Thank you again for watching. Please subscribe and like the video if you liked it. And also, if you have any, uh, any questions or comments, I'd love to hear what you think. Please add me on Instagram and Facebook. I post all this stuff constantly so you can see that stuff updated pretty quickly. And please, before you take off, take a look at the band Blue Pinto. They're the band that provides all the audio for my videos. A link to their Facebook page is at the end of the video. All links needed are going to be, again, at the end of the video or in the description area below. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you soon with some awesome new rear suspension.